Good afternoon. My name is John Carbone. I'm with Express Logic. And I'm here to talk to you about our ThreadX real time operating system and the efforts that we've been uh, undertaking to get it available for those who are using the RISC V architecture. So, first of all, ThreadX is a commercial RTOS. It was introduced by Express Logic in 1997, about a year after Express Logic was founded. It's been in production since then, and it's used by major Internet of Things and uh, embedded manufacturers of products in the areas of consumer electronics, industrial controls, <clears throat> medical devices, transportation, things like that in general, a few other outlying applications as well. The ThreadX has been used in the development of and is deployed in over 6.2 billion electronic devices of these types. And many of the, or some of the manufacturers that have employed ThreadX in their products, some of which are company based products, things where the, the company is betting their, their company on a particular product line and um, they've chosen ThreadX, we're very proud to have been chosen by some prestigious companies. A little bit of overview about ThreadX, um, it's a small footprint RTOS, can be as small as about 2K bytes, but it's priority based, fully preemptive, and it has a single linear address space. That kind of separates it from uh, more complex RTOSs like Linux, VxWorks, Integrity, things like that. So it fits a space where the, the, the added capabilities of those operating systems are not really required. ThreadX offers basic RTOS services for the creation and use of objects like threads, which are how you break up your application, message queues for communicating back and forth, semaphores, mutexes, timers, memory byte and block pools for allocation and deallocation of memory in a real-time system, and event flags for managing um, multiple combinations of events. ThreadX has also been safety certified for use in safety critical systems by um, IEC and ISO and UL to their standards uh, that are listed up here and, and uh, several others to the, the highest level, SIL4, as well as Class C and ASLD. So it's been highly tested and verified and validated by an independent testing authority, which is valuable not only for manufacturers of products in the safety critical space, but everybody using ThreadX can rest assured that the ThreadX they're using is the one that's been validated and certified for use in safety critical applications. So in addition to the basic capabilities of ThreadX in dealing with the queues and semaphores and things like that, ThreadX also has a number of advanced technological features. And I'll, I'll just cover a couple of them here to give you a sampling. Uh, preemption threshold scheduling, real-time event trace, and memory protected modules. So first of all, with preemption threshold scheduling, this is a technology that's an additional optional scheduling feature whereby you can assign a thread a, a second priority, which gives it a, a threshold for being preempted, as opposed to its basic priority, which is used as the basis for its scheduling. So we separate scheduling from preemption rather than using the same priority for both. And so, for example, assume we have a thread at priority 20, and in our, in our case, the lower numbers are higher priority. So assume you have a thread with priority 20, but you give it a preemption threshold of 15. What that means is that threads with priority with a higher number than 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, which would normally be able to preempt this thread at priority 20, will not. They'll be blocked from preemption. And this is a technology that can be used to minimize uh, context switches in, in a case where you have threads that are related and you don't want them interrupting each other. Another feature is real-time event trace. In ThreadX, if you compile the feature in, it's compilable with a switch at build time, then every time ThreadX executes a service, it'll deposit a, a record or a, um, uh, uh, a bunch of uh, about 32 bytes worth of data into a circular trace buffer on target memory. And then at any point in time, whether you're stopped at a breakpoint in a debugger or the system crashes, you can upload the contents of that memory 
into the host memory, give it a file name, and view the results of the operations using our TraceX host tool. And you can see an example of that that's done here. It'll basically give you a, an indication of all the events that have led up to um, what caused you to stop, whether it's just at a breakpoint or if it's a crash, in which case you can examine the um, events leading up to that. ThreadX also has a, a technology called application modules. Each of these modules are separate executables that are built independently of the main module containing all the ThreadX services. And these modules can reside in memory or they can be downloaded into memory dynamically while the system is running. They can overlay each other. They can be you know, overwritten by new modules that are, that are added at a particular point in time when you need that functionality. And they basically operate just like every other thread in the system, um, except there's an interface back to the core uh, thread X, the resident portion, um, for the services to be performed. So a service that's being requested from a module is going to go through a little extra overhead to perform its service before the, the core can, can uh, perform the service for it. So you'd probably put your highest performance threads in the, the basic module, and then the optional threads that you can afford to sacrifice a little bit. It's not that much, but it is a, a little bit of performance hit in going through the interface. So th this is a, a brief look at the sampling of technology, the basic technology and a few advanced features. There are more. Um, so this is the body of code that we took to port to RISC-V. And the effort to port RISC-V was uh, with the cooperation of uh, Microsemi. And we went through a number of engineering steps to validate the correct operation of ThreadX. As you can imagine, evaluating the correct operation of an RTOS requires a lot of testing and a lot of combinations of things and um, involves a, a long stress test to make sure that nothing is going to occasionally occur. And so you try to increase the likelihood that you'll catch even the outlying cases. So we've developed test programs that start with verifying each service and then combinations of services and then multiple threads and then more threads and various levels of interaction. So we ran this test first of all under Spike as a simulation. Then we ported them to the uh, Microsemi Smart Fusion Creative Development Board that you see pictured up here and reran the tests and verified the correct operation on, on that system on hardware. The final test that we run, once we get all of these individual tests running, is a standard test that we deliver with ThreadX when we license it to a customer for use. And this is very often used as a starting base for application development. It's an eight-thread system that exercises a lot of the capabilities of the, um, of the ThreadX uh, real-time operating system. It uh, does things like um, timer interrupts, queue send, queue receive, semaphore put, semaphore get, mutex uh, put, mutex get, um, things like that, all in combination with eight threads running at different priorities. And we run this test for as long as we feel we need to, a day at least, overnight, uh, if not for multiple days, until it runs completely clean. And so that's the final step in the test. And all of this work has been completed up till this point. Um, as I speak to you today, in fact, I think it was just completed last week. So uh, we're in the, in the stage now where we're putting it through QA, and um, I'll get to the, the status in a minute. But once we have a final port, then we can generate these real numbers. Now, I have them, some numbers here that um, I got from some other 32-bit processor, um, but they're kind of representative. We measure these numbers precisely for the, the RISC-V port and we'll publish them in a data sheet. Um, not only footprint numbers, but also performance numbers. And within the footprint numbers, we show both ROM or flash footprint and RAM sizes that are application dependent. So you can see where basically ThreadX could be as small as 2K bytes, but uh, of course, in, in, uh, in all frankness, you can't do very much with, with just the minimal services. So if you add the queue services and event flags and so forth, you're gonna build up um, a little more memory, but still it's quite small. Um, the RAM sizes can be quite large, but that's 
purely application dependent, so you have control over that. And the result will be a, a footprint that will fit into most microcontroller applications or leave you plenty of room if, if you even have um, ample amounts of memory. We also measure timings. And we do something that um, I don't know that, that everybody does, but I, I think it's a, a valuable thing to do. We take all of the ThreadX services and we measure them in four different modes. And we report these modes in the data sheet that we provide to you. There's the um, immediate response mode, which means the service was performed and nothing happened as a result of that service in the way of, act, of enabling or suspending another thread. Um, then we do the um, thread suspend case, where we perform the service and as a result of the service, some other thread got suspended. And the third case is where another thread got resumed. And then the final case is that the thread got resumed, but it was a higher priority, and so it was going to preempt the running thread, so there's a context switch involved. So that's the most complex case of, of all of these. So we give you the timings for all of those measurements and an explanation of what the measurements mean down below. So currently, um, we, we should be able to get this out as a commercial product before the end of the year. It's Like I said, it's working in-house now. Uh, we're putting it through our final tests and packaging and documentation and getting everything put together in a, in a nice package. We do license this product commercially. Um, if you go to our website or send an email to info at expresslogic.com, um, once we understand your needs, whether you're developing one product or a thousand products, um, they're royalty-free licenses, full source code, um, and so you don't have to worry about that. Um, our website, rtos.com, has a lot of additional useful information, nothing yet about RISC-V because we haven't completed the port and announced it yet, but soon it will. Thank you very much. <laughs>